No way. That's right. What's up? All oh, right. One play. What is going on, everybody? How? Oh, y'all doing? We have a couple, a couple of dope, dope, dope gaming news items for today. But before we get started, give the video a big thumbs up. Like, 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 like. All right. First news item. I thought this was pretty interesting. Bro, Housemark. Sony has just announced last week that they have acquired this studio is now a first party studio returnal this is the studio that just made returnal my personal still game of the year nothing i played this year competes with it but an interesting piece of news just came out pretty shocking actually housemark ceo ilari kutinen has revealed <coughs> that multiple parties were interested in acquiring the developer prior to Sony. So apparently, Sony wasn't the only one pitching for Housemark, in particular, Returnal. When I saw this article, I saw people immediately saying they outbid Microsoft. They outbid Microsoft to get the studio. But bro, no one has thought of Nintendo in this whole equation. This game screams Metroid. The whole while I was playing this, I always said in the back of my mind, was this originally going to be a Metroid game? The similarities are way too striking. The female protagonist. This could have easily been Samus 20 years later. Crash landing from her spaceship. That ship could have easily been Samus' ship. A mysterious alien signal, same thing from Metroid. And when she arrives on this planet, <coughs> there's ancient alien technology already there. The Chozo in Metroid. I'm like, the and, and of course, because it's not um, ending up being a Metroid game, they change stuff. The ship is, of course, not Samus' ship. They change the name of the planet and, and everything else. But, female protagonist, everything just screamed Metroid for me. So maybe Nintendo could have been one. I'm not saying they were, but according to Housemark, Sony wasn't the only one they were in potential deals with. And of course, Sony outbid, outbid everyone and they ended up getting the studio. Um, how smart great studio. I just thought this was interesting that multiple they're saying multiple <coughs> not just one other party but multiple parties were interested in acquiring this um, company prior to Sony finally sealing the deal. All right next news item bro bro we got to talk about this bro. The blessing and the curse that is Game Pass. Bruh, check out this. This is how third party games have been selling on PS5 compared to the Xbox Series X. I want y'all to look at this one graphic Hitman 3. Now, this is coming from the UK, that caveat, but I'm sure once you take the whole global market, <coughs> the numbers probably aren't this off. Hitman 3, PlayStation, 75%, Xbox, 25%. Outriders, 83%, Xbox, 17% of the purchases. Nair Replicant, 89%, Xbox, 11%. Resident Evil Village, 80% on PlayStation platforms, 20% on Xbox. Bro, 
these numbers there's a huge gap in the amount of gamers buying games on playstation than xbox and i think this is the direct result of game pass so many gamers xbox gamers in particular are <coughs> conditioned now i was about to i read this article yesterday no i saw it on twitter where somebody was like they were about to buy a game and they said no nah, i'm not gonna buy it on my xbox i'm just gonna wait for it to come out on game pass and that's been the effect of game pass I think it's a negative effect on game developers because they're not making as much money as they would be if they, you just flat out bought their game for $70 or else they'll just put their games straight on Game Pass if Xbox was giving them such a sweet deal. But Game Pass seems like the result once their games aren't selling and that's not their first priority. Like I said this before in another video, game developers got to eat. And I know dudes are probably like, oh, those Outrider sales only at 20% because the game was free on Game Pass. But bro, did you see Resident Evil Village? The ratio was just the same. Now, now it makes sense. Let's say Housemark <coughs> Xbox was trying to buy it. Now it makes sense why Sony is able to lock all of these exclusive deals when it comes to third-party developers and whatnot. They could just be like, hey, those 20% sales y'all would've got on Xbox, we'll just buy those from you and just make it an exclusive on our platform. It's that easy for them. And the developers are like, it's a no-brainer. We'll make more money just going exclusive on PlayStation. So I think Game Pass is having a negative effect on the industry overall. Um, yeah, it's a good bailout for if games aren't selling, the uh, developers at least get some money, but it's, um, money that people would already buy the game. They're like, nah, I'm not going to buy it. I'm just wait until it comes out on game pass. And those numbers are bad, bro. Hey, Xbox gamers. Y'all can't be complaining about Sony charging, uh, next gen game $70. And y'all ain't buying, <laughs> y'all ain't buying no games at all, bro. <laughs> all right. And the last news item, speaking of gamers complaining, um, Ghost of Tsushima. There has been complaints. Sony fans, this come from PushSquare.com. And they're saying that Sony fans bicker over Ghost of Tsushima PS5 paywall. Spe specifically, it cost $19.99 to upgrade your existing PS4 version to the director's cut and then a further $9.99 to convert it to the next gen edition. And so the gamers are complaining, oh we gotta pay, pay to upgrade. Bro, Nintendo is charging their fans a whole $60 to play Skyward Sword in HD. And not only that, 25 more dollars if you wanna fast travel. You gotta buy an, an Amiibo to unlock that. So keep things in perspective. I also saw a tweet the other day of a 1990 video game uh, newspaper and the price for some of these games, bro. Dudes would have raged if Twitter was around. Check these prices out. These are Super Nintendo games. Killer Instinct, $87. Did it Donkey Kong Country 2, $79. Bro, <laughs> back in the day, some of these games, these cartridge games were expensive. And so I think we just need to deal with it, bro. I mean, $70? For if it's worth it, I'd pay it easily, bro. A lot of dudes were like, uh, Return Returnal was worth the $70, bro. The gameplay, the replayability, I platinum the game. I got my full $70 worth. If it's a great gaming experience, I don't mind it. So, all right, those are all of the news items for the video today. What do you guys think about everything we talked about? Sound off in the comment section below. I wanna know. But before you go, bro, click that subscribe button. Stay up to date. All things gaming, boy. We out, peace.